You know those videos on YouTube of people dissecting movies to the tiniest degree to look for Spider-Man in the background? And then they put red arrows and circles all over it to make it seem really cool and important? Well, that's what I'm doing today. Except instead of looking at a movie trailer, I'm going to be looking at Procreate. In the next few months, Procreate 4 is going to be released probably sometime this fall, and they're putting a ton of new features into it. If you like the app, you should follow them over on Instagram. They've been posting a lot of Instagram stories and putting on a masterclass of how to use social media to promote an upcoming software release. One of those videos that they posted earlier this month were two pages from like a Word document that showed every single feature that they were going to be putting in Procreate 4. I took this opportunity to do a couple screenshots of that video to dissect what they are actually going to be adding in this new version. Now it's a screen cap, it's a little hard to read, but let's parse this thing. Computer Enhance. Okay, that... That usually works in movies. I don't I don't know why that's not working here. Now, I wasn't able to read everything, but I was able to get most of it. Most of the things on this list I would qualify as quality of life improvements. What does that mean? Well, those are just things that make the app just a little bit better here and there. For example, they're moving the app over to Swift 4, which is the latest version of Apple's programming language. A lot of the things like that don't necessarily affect the end user, they're just something that the development team needs to do to keep current. So I just want to take a look at the big changes, the ones that are going to affect you and me while we're drawing in the program. So let's take a look at those. It looks like we're going to get some kind of shape tool that also has some kind of vector properties. There are several line items in here that mention QS, and it doesn't specifically say what QS is, but I'm guessing that QS stands for quick shape. And the reason I'm guessing this is because later down on the list, we see things like lossless rotation of QS items and lossless scaling of QS items. And near those line items, we see things like circle recognition and oval recognition. So if those line items are related to each other, it makes sense that there is some kind of size reshaping tool in there. Also right now in the app, they have something called quick line, which is if you hold your pencil down on there after sketching a little line, it becomes a perfectly straight line. So having a quick line and quick shape, it kind of makes sense. I can also see quick shape working the same way, like if you start to draw an oval, but you put your finger down on the canvas, maybe it snaps to a perfect circle, something like that. There is a quick line improvement listed here on the list as well. I can't quite make out what that says, but it might say improvements to quick line transform. So maybe the quick line is going to behave similarly to the new quick shapes and also be scalable. In fact, I think in the current Procreate, you can scale a quick line a little bit. Uh, I think after you draw it, you can grab the endpoint and, and move it around. So it's possible that quick shapes will work much in the same way, and it's possible that they've been on their development roadmap for a while, they're just getting into this release now. So if they're adding scalable things, it kind of makes sense that you might be thinking that they'd want to add some kind of text tool as well, since text is usually scalable in illustration and design apps like Procreate. My guess is no, I think for now we're not going to see a text tool introduced to Procreate 4, and, and here's why. There is a a line item listed about text in this list, but I don't think it means a text tool. That item says updated fonts. I'm guessing that it has something to do with updating the fonts in the interface and not actually, you know, updating fonts that we can put into our designs and illustrations. Just looking at the list and how it's laid out, they've really broken these features down into tiny chunks. And I think if they were adding a text tool, the way they're adding a shape tool, we would see more than one line item. We saw several relating to the shape tool. I think we would have to see several relating to the text tool since there's only only one that leads me to believe that it's not going to make it into this release. However, I wouldn't be surprised if they're laying the groundwork to add this to future releases. Maybe I'm wrong, but my gut says no. Also adding a ton of stuff to take advantage of iOS 11. Drop down menus are mentioned all over the place on this list. Uh, drag and drop of brushes, drag artwork out of Procreate, drag and drop multiple artworks. A lot of these don't have a lot of context, so you just kind of have to figure out, you know, where are you dragging it to? Drag and drop artwork into gallery. Does this mean I can grab one layer or a couple layers or a group of layers and drag them into the gallery? gallery and create a brand new file, maybe? It's hard to tell, we're gonna have to wait and see. Brushes are getting a big update as well. One of the things they've been demonstrating over on Instagram is the wet paint effects. And I think they're accomplishing this by upgrading the brushes. Mainly, they are adding blend modes to the brushes. Right now, blend modes are attached only to the layers, but by adding it to the brushes, you can make much, much more sophisticated brush tools. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if at some point down the road, we are able to import Photoshop brushes and, and use them effectively within Procreate. Don't think we're gonna see it this time, but it looks like 
it could be possible in the future. Alpha lock and the layer options menu. So it used to be when you wanted to turn on alpha lock, you would swipe to the right on any given layer and it would turn alpha lock on. Now, when they introduced a whole bunch of new features last year to the layer palette, uh, they took that away and now you have to swipe with two fingers on a layer to turn on alpha lock which makes it a lot less discoverable. So this is just a, a, a nice change because I get asked a lot in my tutorials, how do you turn on alpha lock? It's not something you're just gonna stumble into. You have to know it's there. So making it a physical button on the layer or within the layer settings is a good idea. A lot more people are gonna be able to find it. The downside is this totally changes so many of the lessons in my Procreate course over on Udemy. So I'm gonna be having to reshoot a lot of those when this update comes out. I guess that's only my problem though, so you're good. Improvements to PSD export. Totally expected. If you have ever tried to import a Photoshop file into Procreate that has like a layer mask on it, you know that all heck breaks loose. So I'm not surprised at all that they're adding this. Um, they're also adding layer masks uh, in Procreate itself. So moving between Photoshop and Procreate on the desktop or Procreate and Photoshop on the desktop is gonna be a lot better now. Also, it supports TIFFs. So if you're one of those people who likes print and likes to export your work into TIFF files, you could do that. And there's a lot of stuff in general that makes Procreate feel in little ways more like a desktop app. For example, they're making a ton of additions to the metadata that the app actually collects, which is not something that most users are going to see, but if you have a file system, you might wanna know, hey, when was this created? When was this modified? All of that information is going to be in the metadata now. This not only speaks to where Procreate is heading, I hope it also is speaking to where the iPad in general is heading. It also looks like there is going to be massive changes to the gallery. I don't have a problem with the gallery now, but I'm kind of curious to see what they're gonna do with it. I think that they might be also changing that to accommodate a lot of the changes in iOS 11. So I'm sure they're gonna be good improvements, but a lot of the line items here were kind of built around the gallery and how you organize your work and how easily it is to like maybe duplicate multiple things at the same time or move multiple items quicker, that sort of thing. A lot of updates in that area. So my list is incomplete as I was showing the screens, I'm sure you noticed there's a lot of spots where I just couldn't quite read the words. I posted the screenshots I took over on my site and I also posted this full list. So if you wanna take a look at the transcribed list I put together, there's a link down below in the description. Also, if you think you understand some of the words or think I may have mistranslated something here or there, very, very possible because it is kind of a blurry screenshot, you know, let me know because I'd love to kind of update this list and get it going and see how accurate we can make it and see if we can like predict pretty much everything that they're gonna be adding in the new release. So that's all I got. Let me know if I miss anything down in the comments below or you can always hit me up on Twitter. It's all I've got for now. I will see you guys in a couple of days.